is a convenient way to bring more clarity into your life. Hi Sharks, I'm Mark Singer. And I'm Kenza Singer. We're a father and son duo from Santa Barbara and are here to ask for $25,000 for a 5% stake in our company, Iris. Sharks, I have a question for you. What do sugarless ice cream, low salt turkey bacon, and cheese free mac and cheese all have in common? They were all bought by mistake because I didn't have my reading glasses with me at the supermarket. Yeah. And we had to eat all that stuff. That's People great. like my parents who need reading glasses know the frustration of not having their readers with them when they need them. But it doesn't always have to be like that. Actually, I'm wearing my reading glasses right now. With one hand, in one motion, and in one second, Iris reading glasses change from wristwear Oh my gosh. There you go. <laughs> and back again. That's pretty cool. Wow. That is cool. That? Dad, why don't you show them one more time? Using our patented memory metal bridge design, Iris reading glasses both spring open and snap shut. How wow. clever is Amazing. that? Iris has received four international design awards. But more importantly, Iris reading glasses are fashionable. <laughs> so which of you is interested in forming a strategic partnership to share our vision and allow the world to see the power of Iris? Huh. Sharks, in front of you are samples for you to try Best out for yourself. Best pitch ever. Best Thank you. pitch ever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's really clever. Now, I have a very small wrist, and it fits. And you have a patent on this, so I see right there it looks like a utility patent. That's correct. We have a utility patent in the United States, China, Japan, and soon to issue in 26 European countries. And what do you sell them for? What do they cost you to make? Yeah. So they cost us $30.50 that's landed in our warehouse ready to go. We sell them for $110 online, and that includes free shipping. Are you an inventor? Yeah, for me, it was a need-based uh, product. Um, as I got older, I needed read glasses more and more, and uh, they, they were never with me when I needed them. I thought the solution <laughs> was to buy choose. a dozen pair and put them everywhere. I still didn't have them when I needed them. Fortunately, my son had an eye on me and, and he came up with the... Are you an engineer? I am, uh, yes, I have a bachelor's and a master's degree in structural engineering from and Cornell Kenzo, University. how did you come up with the idea? How did you uh, figure it out? I was working as a structural engineer and I designed everything from skyscrapers to soccer stadiums and thought that, you know, hey, physics at the scale of a skyscraper also applies to something as small as a pair of reading glasses. So I just kind of applied what I knew to come up with this mechanism that's both stable open and stable closed. We spent a weekend in his wood shop prototyping it, figured it out, and uh, once we got a working prototype, we thought, hey, this could, this could work, and that's when I quit my engineering job and did this full time. That guy right there is legendary. Found out that he, uh, that's Mark Singer, he's the inventor of Gorilla Glue. You might no have heard way. of that. The old guy yeah. or the young guy? The older guy. It's a father-son duo. Oh, well, yeah, I saw that. Pretty cool. Um, I did some digging. Uh, so, I mean, they had an incredible pitch. I've never heard of it, but at the end, I found all five sharks got together and pulled their money to get 25%. So they each got 5% equity in the end. They all wanted in on this deal. But as of 2023, it was done in 22, I think. This, the deal hadn't actually been inked yet, uh, but they are still selling a lot. They're currently on, they have their own website, Iris. Iris, so it's a full of reading glasses with, uh, that you wear on your wrist. Yeah. Um, so it was hard to find areas to critique here. I did pull up their patent. It was super good. Um, I'm gonna, I got to show it because it was just a quick one minute. The attorney that did this, I got to give him prop, give him her props. Yeah. So here, let's look at this one. Uh, it was really well done. They kept it generic. Let's get down to the claims. That's where I really like to get nerdy. They use this new term. And the so cool about patent laws, you can make up words. By stable, right? By hyphen stable is what they use. So it's a wearable item. They didn't say eyeglasses. I love that, right? Maybe you want to put this on your head or maybe put on your leg. I have no idea. But a wearable item, transition between stable, open configuration. And you've got basically just three, three elements. By stable mechanism. And I think Justin was listening. It's that, that band up, that metal band up top, that you know, bar that has it stable both in the closed and in the open position. So it's mechanical. It's a mechanism. A pair of frame members connected and separated where it's got a spring and a compression strut operable for holding them. 
the item in the open and close configurations. So you don't even see the word glasses here. You don't see the word eye. So it's very nice and generic, a really, really nice first uh, independent claim. They do have their website up. You can see that in action. I was impressed also with their sales. They were saying they had uh, upwards of seven figure sales their next year. But one issue, and I mentioned this earlier in the show, and I'll, get, I'll let you talk in a second, Matt, is they only have one patent. And yes, they're getting patents all over the world, as he was saying. The problem with getting one patent is if there's a design around, you're not really able to change. You can't get additional rights. Right. And one of the interesting you know, copycats that showed up on Amazon was this one here. I mean, it's obviously a very cheap looking knockoff, mm -hmm. but it's sunglasses, okay? Something you could probably add as a child patent had they filed a second child or also using this roll up, right? Type of a... Um... <laughs> like one of those slap bracelets we used to play with? It's a slap, right? So yeah, if the, you could still use a strut, but if they left it open, they may be able to continue protection into other structures. To help. I think it's like that, like snaps on your faces, like rips in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, here we go. Go ahead. You got a couple minutes. What's uh, yeah. So, I mean, they, they have a trademark registration for the, the product itself, right? Okay. You know how I feel. I mean, if, if you're going to file a product application, you should probably file an online retail store application as well. They haven't yep. done that. What's interesting about their file history, though, is like they had an application prior to their newest registration that they expressly abandoned. Um, I haven't dug into it enough to know exactly why they did that, but they filed one application back in 2016. Uh, it was suspended. There's probably another pending application in front of them. For whatever reason, at some point, they decided to file a new application. Again, I'd have to dig in to see why. And then they abandoned their old application. So they kind of bookended, co-pended them. Okay. And then the new application, they ended up basically extending that intent to use application for three years before they actually went to market in 2021. So um, interesting, but yeah, no, I mean, like, like the patent side of things, so this is a professionally done trademark, you know, somebody was on top of it. So cool and, name. Um, yeah. I like it. Suggestive, right? Eyes, strap, wrist, you know, I wrist. Yeah. 